All right, this is going to be a video on how to complete the wing clamp. Um, specifically, we're going to use the wing clamp using equations. Uh, the wing clamp drawing that we're going to work from is this right here, PDF file that I have saved to your Schoology account. And basically, I'm going to read the directions here at the top. It says, one, we're going to complete the following part using our equations. So we're going to go back and review that. We're going to find the mass of each part, and we're going to enter that into our Schoology um, assessment that I have located on the Schoology website. And then we're going to upload these parts to Schoology when we're done. So there's basically these three pieces are all going to be part one, two, and three will each individually be uploaded to Schoology for evaluation. Now with that said, we have to start by getting our SOLIDWORKS open, working with the metric part down here in the corner, and then we're going to have to start creating an equation or global variables for part one, part two, and part three using A, B, C, and D provided right here in this box. At this point, I'm going to slide this over to my other screen. I'm going to start with a file new, start with metric, and say OK. Now again, we should have an equations folder here. If you do not see one, what we need to do is, at the top right here, right click, go to hidden tree items, go to hide show tree items, and where it says equations right here, you need to make sure it's an automatic or hide, it should be under the word show. Once you have it there and say OK, you should now over here in your design tree have an equations folder ready to go. Now what we have to do is we have to set this folder up. So we need to start actually setting up the numbers that we got to work with. So in order to start working with equations, I need to go here and right click on the equations folder. Go to manage equations. Now, in this very first white box in our global variables, I'm going to put my cursor in there. Now, I prefer to have all my letters the same in capital, so I'm going to go ahead and do a caps lock. Now, this is critical. In order for your equations to work or your global variables to work, we must use quotation marks. So, in order for this to work, I must go shift quotation, capital letter A, shift quotation, tab over. Now, in there, I'm going to take the first one. In this case, A will be 140. Enter. Go to the next line. Shift, quotation, capital B, quotation, tab, 140. Enter. Third line. Shift, quotation, capital C, quotation, tab. That number will be 30. And then this last line will be shift, quotations, capital letter D, Close quotations, tab, 30, enter. <coughs> now at this point, hit OK. And your equation sheet, you're going to see a down arrow. If you drop that down, now here are your global variables, A, B, C, and D. Now as we start drawing, I will remind you how to access those or link them as we do our dimensioning. Okay, so now at this point, going back and bringing this drawing over, let's take a look at it. Now I'm going to actually start this from the top view. So I'm going to create this outside shape. I'm not going to put the chamfers on until the end. So I'm actually going to create this as a squared off shape, as you kind of see right here. And then we are going to extrude that first shape a distance of letter C. Okay, from there, what I'm going to do is come back, add on this top piece. Okay, and we're going to actually draw this by creating a rectangle first that we'll then extrude up 10 millimeters. Okay, then we're going to come back and chop off this front edge and back edge, and then we'll chamfer over these sides. Okay, actually what we'll do is we'll put the chamfers on here first, and then we'll add on the chamfers to the sides. Okay, and I'll tell you why in the end. Uh, it, it gives you an error statement and won't let you do it unless you do it in a certain order. Okay, then my plan is to mirror this piece over to the other side. So we're going to do a mid-plane extrusion on this very first extrude that we do, okay? Now, from here, let's go ahead and start this. Oh, and then on the right-hand side, we're also going to have to make this cut on the back edge. Sorry, I forgot one more piece, okay? Last part of this will be to put the circles in and then to shell this out. And the shell will be kind of a unique tool. We haven't really used it at all this year, so I'm going to show you some cool things with it as we go through this, because the shell could be on the CSWA. I would not be surprised, okay? So... Coming over here, put this away. I'm going to start on my top plane with a new sketch. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and in my case, I'm going to use basically, I'm going to draw a center line here, like so, and hit escape. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on my dynamic mirror tool. Now if you don't have that, you can always draw one half of this and then mirror it over. Now why am I thinking about dynamic mirror and mirroring? Well, this is a symmetric part around that vertical line. So having that as a, uh, knowing that's symmetrical means I can mirror it over. Now I need to make sure this is also vertical because I don't see a vertical symbol. And there we go. So I'm going to take my line tool. Oops, actually, excuse me. I'm going to go here first. Make sure that's vertical. It is. I'm actually going to go here and try my dynamic mirror entities. Now when I do that, it's going to ask me to select a line or linear model to mirror about. I'm going to pick this line. And you'll know it's active when you see these like little equal symbols at the top and the bottom. Okay, it's basically a mirroring symbol. So now as I begin to draw, you will watch, it will start, if I draw to my right, it will automatically copy what I'm doing to the right over to the left. Okay, so I'm going to start here at the origin. I'm going to kind of pull a little bit out to my right, pull up at an angle, pull up, pull in, pull down, and pull in. Okay, so I'm gonna get that general shape right there. I'm gonna hit escape to tell I'm done. Okay, hit my F key. I'm gonna turn my dynamic mirror off because I don't need any more. Now all I'm gonna do is start adding my dimensions, get the basic shape. So first thing I'm gonna do is from this left-hand side to this right-hand side, I'm gonna basically put in the letter A, okay? If you look over here, this is the letter A. Okay, now to activate that so it matches into my global variables. This is very, very critical. I'm not going to just going to type in the letter A. What I have to do to activate this and link it to my equations folder is I hit the equal sign. And when I do that, it gives me these choices of global variables, A, B, and C, as you can see to the right. I'm going to pick global variable A and check mark. And the way I know it's now a global variable is I see that sigma symbol right next to the number 140. That is very important to understand. That tells me right now this is linked over to my equations folder right here because that's the same symbol of 140. Okay. Now I'm going to do the next one. So from this point here to this point here, it's going to be the letter D. Again, to activate that equation, I hit equals global variable D check again you can see that that right there tells me it's linked to my folder i'm going to go up to here from the top to the bottom this is going to be letter b so again to activate that i'm going to say equals global variable not a equals global variable b check mark this dimension here it's going to be equals global variable B divided by 2. You can actually create equations here. Enter. Oops, check mark, excuse me. Okay. This dimension up top is going to be 40. And then this is important to also understand is that this point here and this point here are horizontal. So now looking at this, I've got it fully defined. I've got the things I need here. Okay, now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and put in the two circles. So I'm going to go ahead, but I'm going to actually, yeah, I'm going to actually put those in right now. So I'm going to save myself the step by adding in the circles here and here. Get my smart dimension on. Dimension from the center here to the top line here, a distance of 25. I'm going to make this a diameter of 15. And again, I'm looking at this based upon the drawing. The distance from here to the side is 20. Now, using my relationship tool, center of this left-hand circle, control key, center of the right-hand circle, I will make those horizontal. Control key, left, uh, or diameter 15 circle to the left, outside edge of the circle to the right, and make them equal. Last but not least, I'm going to add a dimension from this point here in of 20 millimeters. Now, from here, I'm going to go to my feature toolbar. 
I'm going to do an extruded boss base. And I want to do this from a midplane. This is going to be really important. I try to keep my planes in the middle. This is going to play out here a little bit more in the end, especially when I want to mirror, feature mirror from the top to the bottom. I want to feature mirror over the top plane. Now, in this case, my thickness here is the letter C. Okay, so in order to activate that, just like I did in my dimensions over here to the left where it says the depth of 1, all I'm going to do where it says 10 is type in equals global variable letter C. I'm going to hit my check mark. There is the beginning of my part. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and add my AISI 1020 steel. So I'm going to go to material, edit material. AISI 1020. Don't worry about the cold roll and any of that stuff. Just the AISI 1020. Apply and close. I'm going to go up to the top and do a file save as. I'm going to save this as wing clamp part one <laughs> underscore my last name. Okay, I'm going to save this out to my desktop and save. So looking at that, basically from this point here, I'm going to go ahead and add on a top piece right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add that on. Um, yeah, I guess I can do that now. Or actually in this case, what I think I'm going to do is actually go back to here. I think I'm going to go ahead and add on these six fillets right here. Or not fillets, excuse me, chamfers. I'm going to go ahead and get those taken care of because that would be really quick to do. So I'm going to go ahead and move that back over. I'm going to turn on my feature toolbar and go from fillet to chamfer. I want the chamfer to be a 10 by 45. Okay, and I'm going to hit six of these. There's six total. Okay, and the six are going to be each of these edges here. There's one there. I'll rotate around and do this one here, over here. There's four, and then five, and number six. So there are my six 10 by 45 degree chamfers. I will say check mark, and now that puts me to this point here. Now, I'm going to highlight this top surface. Or actually, depends on how you want to do this. We can actually go on our, I'm going to do the right plane first, and then we'll build off our top surface. So I'm going to do the right plane and do a sketch. And I know it sounds like I'm jumping around. I'm just trying to think of logically the fastest way to get this done. So I'm going to start on the right side plane, do a space bar, normal two. And what I want to do is I want to cut off the back corner right here. So I'm going to turn my line tool and create a triangle, kind of like this to cut this back area off. Now, two dimensions I need for this. From this point here to the bottom, according to the drawing, that is 15 millimeters. And then from this angled line to this bottom edge is supposed to be 35 degrees, 35. Okay, so now if you look, there's that triangle. All right, now all I'm gonna do is go to Features, Extruded Cut, through all both and check. Okay, so now looking at my isometric, there is that back end cut off. So again, if we're looking at our drawing here, I now have my holes, I have these chamfered edges, I have that back slope cut off right here. Now I need to add this top piece, okay, get it all cut and trimmed, mirror it over, and then we'll finish with a shell. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that done, sliding this over. I'm going to highlight this top face and start a new sketch. Space bar, normal two. And I'm going to take a corner rectangle. I'm going to go with this corner rectangle. I'm going to come back to here. Now, the length of this, according to the drawing, is going to be a height of B divided by 2. So equals global variable B divided by 2. Check. Okay, the width of this is going to be, in this case, 40. Okay, now i got to put two numbers here. I'm going to put 40 here. Let me back this up for a second. Back up. And that's going to be at the midpoint. So I could do a relationship there, or I'm just going to type in 20. Okay, make it real simple. 
I could also basically, um, like I said, I could have done a midpoint of the line and, and, and attach it here with a coincident relationship. Now, I'm not worrying about all the angles and stuff. I'm starting with a simple rectangle that I'm going to extrude up 10 millimeters. So I'm going to go to Features, Extruded Boss Base, 10 millimeters, and check. So now if I'm looking at, from an isometric, here's what I'm looking at right now. Okay, from here what I'm going to do is again go to my right plane. We are going to cut off the front edge. We're going to go ahead and cut this part of that rectangle off and this back part. We're going to do a mid-plane uh, or uh, cut through all, both directions. Okay, once we do that, we'll finish off chamfering these two sides and then we'll finish off with our shell. Okay, so going with this, I'm going to start a sketch on my plane right there, space bar normal 2. I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to draw a triangle like so. I'm going to come to the back and do the same exact thing. I'm going to come back here to this corner, draw uphill a little bit, back and down. Okay. This one is pretty straightforward. The length of this line is 10. Okay. So it's 10 by 10. That angle is automatically a 45 degree if you understand equilateral triangles. Okay. Now, from here, I'm going to go to uh, this angle here. So the angle is going to be from this line to here will be 20 degrees, 20. Okay, so I have two dimensions, fully defined figure. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at right now. You can see it kind of sitting right in the middle of the park. I'm going to go to Features, Extruded Cut, Through All Both. Hit my check mark. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at now. So from here, I'm going to do a quick feature, go under my fillet and drop it to chamfer. And again, using a 10 by 45, I'm going to chamfer that edge and this edge. Okay, and hit my check mark. So now I get this nice blend. It's the only way this one will work. You could, you could try to do an extrusion this way, but it won't work. Okay, so that is giving me the general shape I'm looking for. Now, what I need to do is take this piece and I'm going to put it underneath. Okay. Actually, in this case, I got to do one thing. I actually got to take and move this chamfer up. I forgot one thing. I need to mirror this over and then I'll add my chamfers on. Okay. This is really important because when I go to do my um, shell tool, uh, if I have those chamfers on, it gives me, um, it chamfers the inside also, and I don't want to chamfer. The, the cut is straight through. So let's go ahead and do a quick feature mirror here. So under my feature toolbar, go to your mirror tool. The plane I'm going to mirror over will be my top. The feature I want to mirror over will be this boss extrude right here. So it goes the other side. And I'm going to hit my check mark. Okay, now, before I go into the chamfer, I'm going to use a shell tool. I need to shell this while this is a square box. Okay. Oops, actually I actually forgot one thing. Oh, does anyone see what I did wrong? I forgot also in the mirror to also bring in my cut extrude because otherwise it's just a rectangle. Okay, so I need both of those to be in there. So two of these, boss extrude and cut extrude. Okay, so now it looks pretty much the same here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do from here is go to my shell tool. And according to the drawing, it says the shell should be 5 millimeters. And then I'll show you right where that says there. Okay, it says 5 is the TYP shell. Now, we haven't used the shell a lot. What that's going to do is going to hollow the part out. Okay, now when you go to click on this, whatever face you click on is also going to be hollowed out or removed. Now, in order for this to work, we've got to hit five faces. Or actually, excuse me, six faces. We're going to hit this first one here, this one on the side this one on this side, the top face here, this angled face here, and we're going to finish by hollowing out this back window right here. Okay, now I'm going to type in five millimeters for my thickness and hit my check mark. And at this point, this is what you're looking at. Okay, so if you're looking at the isometric, there is that squared off shape. Now, I'm going to come back down, drop this to where my chamfer is. Now, if you deleted your chamfer, no big deal. You can go ahead and add that back on, and then you can come back and finish by chamfering these two edges right here, 
So now it fills in. The reason I didn't do that earlier, because if I did do that, so here's a great example. If I pull this chamfer, and I can do this with a left click and pull, if I pull that above my shell, okay, to right here. Oops, let me pull that up a little bit higher. I can pull up. Okay, look what happened to the shell when I put the chamfer in front of the shell. Notice instead of being the inside being square, it now has a angle to the sides. Okay, which if you look at our drawing is not correct. This is supposed to be perfectly square, not hollow or not at an angle. So that is important that I chamfer after I do my shell. Now, in this case, all I'm going to do is take my chamfer, left click and hold, and pull it back below the shell. Okay, and now you can see it's squared up again. Okay, so at this point, my first part is done. So let's do a quick save. All right, now, you should find the mass on this, but you usually go and evaluate into your mass properties. I'm not going to show that. I want you to find it, and then I want you to take that and I want you to input that into your Schoology under the Schoology assessment for part or the wing nut part one. Okay, you're gonna put in six different masses on that assessment, three for this part and three for the next one. Okay, now with this done, what I wanna do next is I wanna go ahead and do part two. So I've got part one complete on the screen. I did my mass properties and I entered that into my assessment. Now what I want to do is go back to my equations and change these four numbers so I can get a new mass. Okay, so with that said, slide that back over. I'm going to go to my equations and right click and say manage equations. Now where it says A, I'm going to keep the A at 140. B, however, is going to go to 120. Okay, you start seeing it to change. I'll move that up so you can see this. Okay. C is going to go to 28, enter, and D is going to go to 35, enter. And just like that, I'm going to do a quick file, save as, wing clamp part 2, underscore your last name, and hit save. Now again, you're going to go to your mass properties, find the mass properties for this, and enter it into the assessment for this week on problem number 2. Okay, you'll in addition, you want to save these individually because you're going to upload part one, part two, and part three to Schoology. Okay, so here's part two. Now, with part two being done, I'm going to do one more change using my equations to get part three, which is going to change these four numbers here. So 160, 135, 32, and 25. Okay, so again, going over here to my equations on my design tree, I'm going to right click. Manage equations, A is going to become 160, enter. B is going to become 135, enter. C is going to become 32, enter. And D is going to become 25, enter. And just like that, part number three is complete. Okay, I'm going to quickly do a file save as. Mini wing clamp part three underscore your last name and hit save. Okay, again, get your mass property for this new part, input it into problem number three in the Schoology assessment for week three, and then you are done with this set of problems. Okay, at this point, the video is now done. Hopefully, that gets you through this problem in a short amount of time. Okay, make sure you get those masses into the assessment and you upload these three parts into Schoology. Okay, use this video to your advantage, rewind and pause as needed, otherwise good luck.